the next point was the defense. I mean, they came up huge. You know, they weren't playing as great as they had toward the end of the season, but you know, came out huge with their their defensive line at eight sacks on last night's game. And so, I mean, my question for you was, do you think that this was kind of more game flow and toward the end of the game, you know, it was kind of garbage time and they kept started accumulating those sacks from the line? Or, you know, is this what we can expect going forward? And is this defense really surging at the road time as well? I'd say the two sacks by Geno Grissom at the def- end of the game were definitely some garbage yeah. time sacks. But up to that point, it was just really encouraging to see the Patriots pass for us pick up like it has, especially with guys like uh, Ricky Jean Sw- Francois and Adam Butler getting up there. Because once you get that interior pass rush, that's what really helps you against mobile guys like Marcus Mariota. If it's a defensive end that's flying around the edge, a mm-hmm. guy like Mariota can step aside. Even a guy like Blake Bortles coming up this week, uh, if, you, if a quarterback has decent mobility, he can get around that. But if that pressure is coming right up the middle, then that's the best kind of pressure you can get because you're just coming around the quarterback's face. And a lot of it was just a lot of just the defense just – from all directions, just meeting at the quarterback and just sort of crunching him, just smooshing him in there. Mm-hmm. And that's really the most encouraging signs you can see from this defensive line because for a lot of the year, the Patriots didn't have the most productive pass rush, but as you saw this last week, it was really good. A large part of that was uh, really good coverage from the secondary. I know one thing we wanted to talk about was Stephon Gilmore yes. in the game he played. I just play off debut for him. Yeah, um, he didn't have an interception or anything, but he also didn't have a pass completed mm-hmm. on him, I'm pretty sure. Just completely wiped his guy off the map. Um, with Malcolm Butler on the other side, uh, he gave up a couple touchdowns and hasn't had the best year. Mm-hmm. But Stephon Gilmore has been, dis- d- despite all the criticism he's faced this year, he's had a really good season and a terrific playoff debut. So that's a really encouraging sign with a team like the Jaguars coming up this week. Absolutely. And, I mean, do you think that Butler could be a concern going forward? I know, you know, that first touchdown with Corey Davis – he made a heck of a catch, you know, one-handed in the back of the end zone, and it kind of looked like it was right beyond the outstretched fingers of Malcolm Butler. I mean, do you think that, you know, there's any concern with him going forward covering these guys or that it was just, you know, one of those plays? Um, looking down the road, uh, we're not looking at the Super Bowl yet, but I don't think there's anyone on the Jaguars that Malcolm Butler can't handle. Or, uh, I, I mean, they're – I mean, there are guys on the Jaguars who can make those sort of plays, like uh, that Corey Davis said last week. But there's no guy that I'm concerned about. Ooh, is Malcolm Butler going to be able to like handle? The, like, get, is he going to get roasted by these guys? He's not going to get roasted. He might give up some plays like he did last week. But even with the touchdowns, he didn't get roasted. He wasn't terribly out of position. It was just a great play by a receiver, and that's the sort of stuff that you're going to that you. You don't want to give up those plays, but if you're going to give up something, those are the ones you want to give up. You don't want to have it be like the Panthers game at the beginning of the year where there's no communication, there's guys running free, cornerbacks have no idea what they're doing. Even when the Patriots are giving up plays, it looks like they're in position, and if they're just getting beat man-to-man because the Patriots clearly had a lot of guys towards the line of scrimmage to help stuff Derrick Henry and keep Marcus Mariota contained. And they're really leaving Malcolm Butler alone on an island on those plays. So you're going to give up some of, the, some of those plays, even if they are big gains. But as long as they're not huge gains and he makes a tackle afterwards, like that's you have to give up something when you play these teams. Mm-hmm. And so if that's the worst we're going to see out of Malcolm Butler, I would take that right now.